We Are a Garden by Lisa Westberg Peters and Victoria Tentler Krilov. A story of how diversity took root in America. This book is a special gift for you because we believe in you. Happy reading, the Ubuntu Library. This is not part of the original book, but I thought that was nice. Uh, I found it for free in Ithaca, New York. Long ago, a strong wind blew. It blew people like seeds to a new land. It blew in a girl and her clan when glaciers still covered the north and herds of mammoths still wandered the frozen tundra. They walked across a wide plain and became the first people to live on the scrawling, on this sprawling continent. After countless summers and countless winters, most of the glaciers had melted and the wide plain had vanished beneath the sea. But the wind still blew. It blew a boy and his family across the frigid waters in a canoe. They camped on the shore and stayed to hunt bowhead whales. For a long time, the wind was calm. Bison herds darkened the prairies and snowfall softened the mountains. The first people spread quickly across the new land. They hunted game in its forests, planted corn in its valleys, and built villages on its coasts, and the continent became home. Then, much later, the wind began to blow again. It blew in newcomers from all directions. Some came peacefully, and others pushed aside or clashed with the people who had called the land home for longer than anyone could remember. From the north, the wind blew those who lived in the forests to a new home in the canyons and mesas of the desert. From the south, the wind blew in a string of wagons carrying colonists through a land of mesquite bushes and across a wide river. They settled on a high desert plateau, but not long after, their brutal leader slaughtered the tribe that was living there. From the east, it blew in a sailing ship carrying boys and men who hoped to find their fortune in gold and silver. Instead, they found hunting grounds and villages filled with families. When they had trouble growing their own food, they took the food supplies of the villagers. The wind blew in slave ship after slave ship full of men, women, and children. Traders had forced them from their homes and across the ocean to work from sunup to sundown in the plantation fields for people who did not treat them like humans. And it blew in ships carrying families who were wary of hunger in their homeland or longing to practice their religion freely. From the west, the wind blew in steamships carrying poor farmers who came to lay miles and miles of railroad track. For very low wages, they worked on the steepest mountain passes and in the deepest ravines, and many lost their lives. Later, the wind blew in millions of men, women, and children from the south to do the backbreaking work of harvesting the nation's crops, its cotton and rice, its lettuce and sugar beets. As more and more people settled in the land, the nation erected a monument in its busiest port, welcoming everyone with these words. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The wind still blows. It blows in a baby who sleeps while her mother cleans hotel rooms from dawn to dusk, and a grandmother who once escaped war in a rickety boat and now seeks shelter with her neighbors when a hurricane strikes the coast. The wind blows in a 13-year-old refugee who adjusts her headscarf in the bright afternoon sun and declares she will be a doctor someday.
and a fourth grade boy who plays the same soccer in his new home that he played in his first home. Some people leave rocky soil and hard times behind in their homelands. Others find rocky soil and hard times in the new land. But people, like seeds, take root. Their roots form a tangled web. Their branches form a delicate filigree. And their memories, some painful, some proud, and their enduring hopes for the future linger and mingle in the air. They became we, and we became a garden. A garden of friends, families, and neighbors. A garden of Americans who turn to face the wind. And on this page, it has a, a glossary of some words that you would have heard in the story. And it also explains about the different people that they're talking about. But I'll leave you to read that on your own uh, if you buy the book or pause the video. For Ingrid, Alba, and Julia, my favorite descendants of immigrants, LWP. To my family, who came to the United States to start a new life, and to the United States, which I love like no other country in the world, VTK. Acknowledgements. For their help in answering questions along the way, I thank William Fert Fitzhurt Fitzhugh on the Smithsonian Institution's Arctic Studies Center. Eski Willerslev of the Lundbeck Foundation of Geogenetics Center at the University of Copenhagen, Mary Lynn at the of the Smithsonian Center for Folk Life and Cultural Heritage, and Nicole Martin Rogers, White Earth Nation descendant. For invaluable advice and suggestions, I thank my agent, Sue Cohen, and writing colleagues, Susan Mary Swanson, Lindsay Johnson, Rick Krustowski, and Lauren Stringer. For their endless patience and dedication to this book, Thanks to my editor, Anne Schwartz, and her assistant, Anne-Marie Varga. For inspiration a long time ago, thanks to a group of fourth and fifth graders at Mississippi Creative Arts School in St. Paul, Minnesota. And a final thanks to my daughters, to their families, and to my husband, Dave, for steady companionship and support, LWP. That was... We Are a Garden, a story of how diversity took root in America by Lisa Westberg Peters and Victoria Tentler Krilov. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. Uh, hit the bell button so you're notified when I put out new books or, or videos. And send me a message on the channel if you want to hear about something in particular. Thanks.